Now Jesus, who has just come down from the mountain after having a supernatural experience with his father, with Moses and Elias coming to prepare him for his moment. And the thing is, if we're going to be powerful, we must ascend the mount of prayer. Again, I told you that one of the emphasis of this ministry is prayerfulness. Talking to the Father about all things, everything. Being open and honest and clear and plain. Not hiding anything from Him. But being open wide enough that you could say to the Father that this is what's going on and this is where I need to be. This is my lack, my failings and my frailties. And God help me to get and progress in you to the place where I need to be in you. So here he comes. And he said, I brought him unto thy disciples and they could not care them. And Jesus said, answered and said, O oh, faithless generation, it takes faith to be able to move the things of the demonic world and to move God's heart, heart and to move Jesus and the Holy Spirit as well as angels to come and minister on your behalf. It takes faith to believe God beyond what you see with your natural eyes regardless of what your mind may be communicating to you. It's to believe not what you think and not what you see, but speaking those things that aren't as though they are. Speaking divine healing, divine curing, divine prosperity. You can talk yourself out of a curse and into a blessing by praying and seeking the face of God. You can speak yourself into your healing by choosing to believe God. You could choose to change your circumstances just by speaking it into the atmosphere and believing God for it and resting solely in the belief that God is more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think according to his purposes for your life. It is not God's will that anybody experience demonic possession. But here, then Jesus said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? He knew the answer. He wasn't going to be here in the bodily form much longer. But he wanted his disciples to feel this correction. I want you to feel the correction. That even if you have doubt in your heart or unbelief, this is the time to pray to God to have it eradicated from your life. Faith is a walk and an exercise in choosing to believe God despite what I said earlier, what you see or think or what others are saying to you. It's a choice to believe God against all odds. It's not foolishness because Faith doesn't mean that you ignore your current circumstances. Faith means that you're fully aware of what's transpiring, but you're choosing not to believe the illusion of what has presented itself to get to the reality that lies in God of what really is the real deal and the reality. Because in God, there is peace, there is joy, there is happiness, both now and forevermore. In heaven, there is no suffering. In the presence of God is peace. This child lacked peace. And so did his father. And any time that you have the lack of peace in your heart, it could be because of an evil influence. And sometimes you need to walk through your house and pray. And anoint your house and call out to the name of the Lord and, and read scriptures and play worship music to get your heart and mind in the frame to get the devil out of your circumstances. Now, Jesus says, and perverse generations, how long shall I be with you? How long will, shall I suffer you? Bring him hither unto me. And listen, verse 
18. And Jesus rebuked the devil. And he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. His words of faith. Unwavering faith. The thing is, if you waver, you're like the ship on the sea that is tossed to and fro. Never knowing that it has security. That it can make a firm stance on the waters. Again, I told you that I like watching the History Channel and various other channels that are very educational. And I was watching this program where it talks about this particular ship that they made, which is designed for scientists. But the way that this ship is designed is so unique that when it gets to its destination, which it has to be told under the power of another, and when it gets to its place, it has the ability to upright itself which is a unique thing. And when it uprights itself, there's a good section of it that is submerged under the water. But even in the midst of a storm, that ship does not sway, it does not move, it is a very stable thing, even in the midst of the roughest seas. What I'm submitting to you is you as a Christian are very unique. You have a buoyancy that even in the midst of a storm, it will not sway you and it will not move you. Be ye unmovable, steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You are a firm person. If you would just come to the realization of the greater one who is in you. That he is able to stabilize you and give you the innate ability to be able to address demonic spirits in your presence to the point that you and God, the scriptures say when two or three come together in my name, the Lord said that he would be there also. If it's just you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that's four. And you have all the power that you need. Listen, and the scripture saying the child was cured from that very hour. Then came his disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto him, Because of your unbelief. That's why I said earlier, you must eradicate, dispose of it, quickly remove it, annihilate any unbelief that is in your heart. Unbelief is the opposite of faith in believing. Remember I said on Sunday, whenever you fail to do something, you're giving praise to the devil. Whenever there is unbelief, you give power. Listen, you give power and praise to the devil with unbelief. And you give him more room to work and operate and stay put in a situation. Faith is just the opposite. Faith is the earth earth-shaking remover of everything that is not God. And it tells you that everything that is God now is invited in. Faith gives God strength to operate. Faith gives God strength to speak. Faith gives strength to God to move on your behalf. Faith is the combater of, of unbelief and fear. And it fights unbelief and forces it out of your heart. The thing that you should pray when you're doubting and fearful is, God, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. If you help my unbelief and remove it, there would be no occasion for me to doubt you or to move in faithlessness. Because my lot is faith. We are faith-based Believer, which means that we believe God in spite of what we see or hear. The devil can speak all he wants, but I choose not to believe or entertain your wording. Yes, he may say to you that you're a failure, but if you rebuke that voice and you have a choice to do so, that you will succeed in God. But listen, 
Jesus said, because of your unbelief, but verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, every mountain, everything that has surmounted itself against you, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall, listen, not maybe, not might, listen to how decisive the words of the Lord are and how firm they are. They're not wording that use wishy-washy, which means you what need to watch your wording. Words are spirits and they are life. Jesus said, the very words that I speak to you are spirit and they're life. Whatever you speak gives life to whatever it is that you say. If you speak doubt, if you speak fear, then you will have doubt and fear because it will give life to it. If you will speak faith and courageousness and boldness, then you will have faithfulness. You will have boldness. You will have courage. Whatever you speak, when you say that you're broke, then what normally happens? You think like you're broke. You act like you're broke. You live and do things like a broke person. But when you say that I have. And God blesses you. Then we're not talking about living above your means. And living foolishly. We're talking about speaking faith. To get those things that God know that you have need of. As the scriptures say. Our father knows what we have need of long before we ask. So when we ask he already knows what we need. Not. Always that he's going to give us what we want. We're too spoiled. But he gives us what we need. And Jesus goes on to say. In verse 21. How be of this kind goeth not out but by prayer. And fasting. The uniting of fasting. When I deny myself substance. Turning off the television. Turning off the, TV, the, the, the radio. Turning off all sources of things that. Keeps me away from the presence and understanding of God. Turning off the telephone and the cell phone. Getting off of the emails and the internet. Shutting down and praying. Coupled with fasting and prayer. Uniting the two together. Until I know that God has answered me. Now, if you're not used to fasting. I tell people don't. Unless the Lord is leading you. Then do it gradually. Maybe an hour here. A half hour. Then increase it. Maybe that half an hour turn into two. Two, two hours to four hours. Then eight. Then a whole day. Then a few days. Then a week. And doing it so that you can get your soul right with the Lord. And be in tune with Him to hear what it is that he is saying, and he will speak to you and lead and guide you and direct your pathways in him. God is such an awesome God that he doesn't want his people ever to be possessed by a source that is out of this world. But he makes ways of escapes for all of us through prayer and fasting in his word. And we must understand that devils do exist. But Jesus has power over everything. It is at the name of Jesus, the scriptures say, that every knee shall bow both in heaven and in earth. That means everything. And the devil knows that he has to bow his knee at the name of Jesus. Every demon knows they must bow their knee at the name of Jesus. Don't be deceived. And don't allow the devil to deceive you. God is all powerful in all things. But couple your heart with God's heart. And he will show you that there is nothing impossible to them that believe. Until next week and until Sunday. This is Pastor William Whitfield, Faith, Hope, and Love Ministries and Retreat Services International. Wishing you a blessed week. In the Lord. We thank you for tuning into this broadcast and join us on next Wednesday and Sunday for our time in the Word of the Lord together. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you.